Hi everyone, this is Ovi Gilberto and you're welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for supporting me. I'm really grateful and today I want to thank all of you that my channel has really gone to almost 5,000, you know, subscription. I'm so grateful. I'm so humbled. And um, <clears throat> to this, I promise to give you more work as usual, as per today you can see. So today I'm really going to do a video that I've really never done how to change strings on the bass. I've really never done. And the few things I will say is that if you're a newcomer, subscribe, like, and comment. Don't forget to press the notification bell. Now, when you're doing something you have never done, always it's something you think of, how is it going to be? So you who have ever watched several videos on the internet about how to change strings, I swear to this is going to be so different. And so just be inquisitive to know how I really do it on changing the strings. So pick up your bass and try to imitate what I'm doing. Or if your strings are old and you have a new string, try to do it. And so that you can be there. Okay. So like I told you, various lessons have been done on YouTube on how to change the bass. But today, whatever I'm doing is out of my experience of playing this instrument. And so... There are things I've faced roughly, and, and I think if I share my um, my experience, can really help you. So normally, strings start to sound bad whenever they grow old. And that means you have to change them. So if you don't change them, they'll spoil all your playing. You'll play and you'll sound off-tune all the time. Whenever you tune, it detunes itself. Sometimes you tune, it keeps in the tune you think, and then... The string is just all it's sounding off because it's worn out, you know. So, normally, I will not tell you this is the time you need to change your strings. After one month, no. You change strings depending on how busy is your schedule when using your instrument. I normally change my strings most probably in interval of around three to four months, depending on how busy I am. So, if you're not really doing business with your instrument, just keep it safe and make it good. So uh, some people have made videos and and I mean have got some information from some people that when when your strings are very old, you cook them. I don't really agree with it. I don't really, but I'm not against their uh, philosophy of cooking the old strings. I don't know how that's really done. I don't really feel it at all. But the theory is there. Some people say you can cook the old strings. Especially in my country, Uganda, I've had a number of bassists who say they cook the old strings and it that it becomes new. I don't know whether that's really true. So try. I don't disagree, but I don't really advise you to do such a thing. So here we are. Uh, we are going to remove the strings on the bass. And then uh, there's some few things I will tell you that. Uh, before we do anything so that when we start we just go now if you're if you are really changing the strings you need to have some few tools with you for example I have the plier here it's a cutter I'm going to use for cutting the old strings off if I need really to cut I have the strings okay and uh, something else I'll talk about maybe where necessary but before that these are the main things I have because if I'm changing the strings and I don't have today I'm going to use uh, the Dario you know long scale original USA made is what I'm going to use for changing uh, today I normally prefer the Dario there are so many string types now the, the theories which say that you cut the strings I will not tell you that you may cut, I'll show you something when we start working. So let's get onto the, the strings and then at the bass and then we get to the real work. Okay. So now, like I told you, these strings which are on, they're really, I want to remove them, I want to replace them with the new strings. So most theories, people say you have to cut the strings, and then unwind here and remove them. Now, I'll say something here. You only cut the strings if you feel it's really necessary. You have to cut the strings because 
Sometime, even when they're all strings, they, you may need them somewhere to use them. You could be on the gig, and then maybe the string gets worn out or gets uh, torn up, and then you need to replace. So if you have a pair of old strings, it could help. Though it's not really very good to replace old strings, but sometimes it's necessary. Because, for example, if the strings are old and I had another pair of old strings, and if I replace, they will sound almost the same. But if the strings are new and I replace with the old string, the old string will sound very bad. So you see, keeping them is just for security. And you never know. Sometime in my country, we almost ran out of strings and you had to use the old string throughout. People played old strings during COVID times and it was terrible. So we are going to do this. In my sec, I don't cut the strings, so I'm not going to illustrate that to you. I'm just going to unwind this side on the pegs, and then I'll be able to remove the strings freely. That's all I'm going to do. Yeah. And so because of that, let's go into that work. And you just unwind. You just unwind this very fast. Unwind very fast. Unwind everything. You know, like the music you can hear in the background is actually my original composition and I'm releasing the song this year, so get ready to buy this song. I hope you have fun. Okay. All right, here we are now. The bass is very naked, as you can see. Now, something you have to do is once you reach here, most basses, you don't clean your basses. So you find the fingerboard is really very dirty. So I'm not really going to show you that, but what you need to do here, get a piece of cloth and then, you know, try to clean, which is just soft and like a cotton material. Try to clean through smoothly. Don't bring anything like a steel wire and start, you know, you'll spoil the frets. Just use a piece of cloth and clean. Clean your base, clean the headstock, clean behind here around the pickups. Uh, pickups are normally very dirty clean everything because this is always the right time for you to clean your base and after that pick up the new strings like I told you I'm using the Dario this is the Dario American brand long scale and actually uh, I think uh, to me, this is the best brand I use. Very good for slap, for grooving. For any other thing, it's really so intermediate, you know. It does for me everything. And so, this is how it looks like when I unpack. You can see the Dario. And, you know, and it has the namings here, you know. The colors in the naming and different, different things. So, you just, you know, do your things. And here you are with the strings out. So you just have to know the numbers of each string, which I'm not going to teach you. Okay. I'm just going to put on one by one. What you need to follow me up now is where I'm going now is the most sensitive part. So I'm starting. I have string E. Okay. But in my system, this is the E, the lowest string. I normally start with like, I can start like with either string A or string D like I start with center it, it's not like it's not like it's it's a religion that you have to start with E me I start with center I center I feel like this centers everything so I start like with with E with A here and then I resort to other things so you put your string here from behind I put your string and you know and roll it in this is a this is very easy to put here now the science comes back here here is the science now where most people fall down so this is e okay and on e i mean i'm a sorry sorry not e this is string a is where i'm starting from i'm centering i can use a or d so from here don't push the whole of this thing in the hole it's going to get you problem on the on the peg winder you should on the this this rod here you need two to three winders 
More than that, it's not very, very good idea. So what you do is once the string is here on this, try to measure it. So count like two pegs, one, okay? From here, one, and then two, okay? Here you are. And then get the head, measure two of this, then cut the remaining one, you know? You just get your cutter. I showed you. I told you I'm using this. Just cut this off. And after that, get this and put it into, you know, this hole. Now, remember this side, if I take this, I'm unloosing. If I take this, I'm tying. So, you push it down and then unwind it the first time. And then put it down to the bottom, okay? And so start winding, okay? This has to really be down to the bottom, okay? It has to be three to two, two to three windings on the on this rod. If it's more than that, it's not a very good idea. It's not a very, very good idea. So, and you see, we almost have like, you know, like almost, you know, three, three windings. There you are. So here, I feel like I have centered my base. So the next, after doing A, I go to D, you know. Do the same science, push it behind, even though I don't show you now too much of it. And move it to this point. Now, the problem with the D is now you don't have another peg. So you measure one. This is one peg to the other and this distance. Then pick this distance. Put it here, so it's more or less somewhere here, and you cut it off. Like, you just take like two. So, some people say with fender bases, you don't take two, but me, I say you take two because the proper windings, when you have proper windings, they also contribute to your uh, tuning, you know? The bass may, if you don't have proper windings under those, Rods, you might face problems, especially when you are tuning. That's why some bass players, in the middle of tuning, their basses, I mean playing their basses gets off, and that's a problem. Okay. So, here we are. And we're almost there. You can see the windings are going to be like two or three. You can see from behind. So you make this behind fine, and there you are. And if you're using the other machine, it's really the winder, the peg winder. It do, does it really so smoothly and very fast. There you are. And from there, this is how I do it. I start with A or D, and then I resolve to uh, E and G. I mean, it's not a religion, okay? Like I told you, the song you hear in the background, it's really one of my release this coming year. I hope you'll be ready. I posted a funny version of this somewhere, but now this is the, the real. Okay, here we are with the E, the biggest string on this bass. So you just take two, one and two, somewhere here, and you cut it off. You know? it's no, there's no big deal here, sorry. Some people uh, say, you know, it is very hard to put on strings. It's not very hard, okay? It's not very hard. It's just very, very, very simple. Just get the science right and have experience of how to do it. That's what I will tell you. You see, this moves very fast. And you are gone. If I'm using the peg winder, it just runs madly like a machine gun and then it's done yeah so if you have anything to say in the comment section you let me know or maybe you have another way you do this and maybe you share your idea and i get to know maybe that i can add i can add that in my profiles and then 
that can make more meaning. So here you are. So you can see in every peg, we have two, like two and a half windings, which is really very beautiful and it's very, very healthy you know, according to me. Okay, so the last one now, as you can see, I'm just putting on G, the highest string on this bass. If, if the six strings, you're going to put uh, the C, high C. So same here, you know, you move it up, and there you are. Good. So this a little bit with this bass, there's some hook here so that the strings a little bit bend before, you know. Before now, with this, it's a tricky thing because we need two things. So this is like one. So if I put this one here, it's here. And then the next is almost the whole of it. I don't need really to cut this one. You see from here, I have like, you know, one. If I bring this one here, it's this. Next is that. I'm going to cut a little tip of it, small tip of it. If you can see it very well, just small cutting on it, something like this. Just uh, it's the same thing. Then I move it down. Then it goes here very fast, and we we're done. We get done. We thank God we're almost done. It's been long. Like I said, uh, you could have another way. And some problems you could encounter here is that if you, your pegs are having problems, then you could encounter more problems in tuning because the string will keep uh, moving back and forward, something like that, you know. Something like that, you know. Here we are. We're done, you know. It's very simple, very easy, very friendly. Now, that means the next phase is you have to tune, okay? Now, let me speak some few things here before we finish. Normally, don't just put on, you know. I have a tuner here. It's a Dadario tuner as well. I love Dadario products as well. So putting the tuner here and starting to tune is not the deal. Try to massage the string. So there are two sensitive areas here. I'll talk about the nut area here and then the bridge section here behind here. Now, try to massage the strings. It means do something like this, you know. Try to massage the strings. And then all the strings, try to massage them, you know. Try to massage them. Why? Because it's not stable, okay? It's a new thing. It's a new thing, you know? And then at the end of the bridge here, try to press the, you know, the, the point, attacking point of the, the note, the open strings should also get used. So try to bend it down. It's also a kind of massage. And likewise, here, to the bridge also try to bend the attacking points so that they really make sense and sit well into the bridge uh, uh, these uh, pillars here so that the string is really together and after that you know get hold of your bass start tuning i'm not going to tune but this is what will happen you tune the first time you play the bass will be in tune can imagine which key then when i tune then after a few minutes you check it will be off tune a little bit retune again and then play retune you may tune like three to five times if the pegs are really not sick then it normalizes but if it doesn't normalize for a long time sometimes your pegs are totally not good and now the last thing i will speak about is that never change your strings when the following day you have a gig. It's a very, very bad thing. It happened to me one day in some performance and I was so embarrassed. Don't change the strings when the following day you have a gig. Only make sure that if you have a gig next week, change the string this week. Then use it for some time, rehearse using it so that by the time you go to the gig, 
the strings have stabilized. If you doubt me, try it one day and then you'll be get disappointed. You'll be in church or wherever you're playing and then the string is going off tune. Just not because the string is old, but new strings, I said, they also have problems. You know, don't change the strings when the following day you have a gig. At least give it something like five days, then the strings will stabilize and keep playing, keep tuning and making it fine. So that's all. I hope this lesson has helped you and I hope to see more comments in the comment section and more likes as usual. Thank you for passing by. Thank you for bearing with me all these long minutes. God bless you. Bye-bye.